What's up guys, Doug Polk here and welcome back to another episode of Poker Hands. And today we're going to be taking a look at a hand played between Sam Greenwood and Timothy Sue. And this hand is from deep in the World Series of Poker main event and has been getting a lot of buzz lately. This hand occurs with 45 players left in the main. We're talking deep in the main event, there are only 5 tables left. So every hand is important, especially when two of the bigger stacks clash, which is what's going to happen right here. It's been a while since we've seen two, yeah. two cards. Not happy. Not happy. But suited connectors, like 8 7, 9 8, 10 9, among the best hands to crack pocket aces. And he does make a big bet, 10 big blinds here, but he's relatively deep with Sue. Cool. Two of the bigger stacks of the table. With an economy of motion. A call. Our hand begins at 125, 250, thousand of course blinds. Now this hand is going to be a, a deeper stack pot. We see Sam Greenwood on 15 to 16 million chips, and we see Timothy Sue on around 30 million. Now a 250,000 uh, chip big blind. We're looking at something in the vicinity of 60, 65 big blinds. So certainly a hand where we're going to have some play. It's also important to understand the dynamic right now. There are only 45 players left in the main event. So uh, the smaller stacks need to try and make moves to build a stack. The middling stacks are really in one of the, the worst positions of their poker career. They're getting attacked by the big stacks. The small stacks can jam on them. So there's going to be a lot of pressure on them. Uh, but if you can build a stack at this phase in the main event, a lot of times you can then carry that on to a victory. So the stakes have never been higher as the action falls to Timothy Sue in the cutoff, who looks out 10-9 suited and decides to go for the min raise. Definitely the standard play to be opening here with this hand. Uh, and it could make some sense to use a smaller size like minimum if you think the big blind's a bit too tight. I don't really want to bore you with prefab raise size conversation. But the point is, definitely an open from him. The action falls to the big blind and Sam looks down at my favorite hand, pocket aces. This is a situation where you absolutely have to re-raise. I see sometimes people in these spots get a little scared. They want to keep the pot small. And that's all well and good. Sam should re-raise here less than he would normally because of the dynamic, because of how valuable his chips are at this point. But you got to be putting in raises with your good hands, guys. You can't play scared, especially when you're at this spot in the main. And so he does decide to re-raise to 2.5 million. I like this raise size, too. It's a good size. It's 5x the open. It's going to dissuade a lot of hands that uh, maybe want to see a flop from Timothy Sue here in the cutoff, especially given that he's the, the biggest stack at the table. He's going to be raising with a lot of hands. Back over to Sue. Now, when he has this 10-9 suit against this size raise, it's pretty close. Uh, I think you should probably mainly call. I don't mind mixing in some folds, but um, he's certainly on the cusp. If he had a hand like 8-7 suited, you're going to probably mainly want to fold, especially given that Sam Greenwood should be a bit tighter here. And if you had a hand like Jack-10 or Queen-Jack suited, it would be a no-brainer call. So you're right in the middle, but probably lean towards a call, which he decides to make, and let's take a flop. Mm. It's a fun flop. Aces against the biggest stack in the room. Looks like about 1.8. Yeah, so he doesn't size up here. Yeah. Definitely has a big hand to protect. Perhaps he's not trying to inflate a pot in a spot where a lot of turn cards are going to be really scary for him. It's really worth Timothy Sue seeing a turn card here. He's getting four to one on this call, and he's less than a two to one dog in the hand. Call. He does call, and they're building a monster pot here. A big hand and a Big hand. We get an action flop, queen jack four with two diamonds. This is the kind of board both players can play. Obviously, Sam has an over pair uh, on a board that not many hands are ahead of him. His opponent isn't going to have queens pre flop. Most likely, he would re raise that. Jacks is possible, but fairly unlikely. Uh, pocket fours is possible, and then queen jack suited. But other than that, all of the hands his opponents can have, he has beat. Any queen, any jack, uh, any straight draw, any flush draw, any other pair. I mean, he really has uh, Sue's range crushed here with his aces. And this is a spot where I think sometimes players, again, get a little too timid. They they don't want to bet and, you know, maybe risk their life or they want to trap their opponent. Your main decision here should be to bet. Now, if once in a while you want to work in a check, uh, especially against some aggressive opponents, I don't mind that. But the main line needs to be bet. And this is kind of just like the golden rule of poker. When you have a good hand, you should mainly bet 
build the pot, and get value from your opponent's worst hands. Sam does decide to bet one third pot, a reasonable bet size. Uh, I, I could see a couple of different strategies here. I don't mind going with a really big size to put uh, your opponent in a tough spot when they have a queen or a jack or a draw, where they kind of have to either jam or fold, or maybe they, they, they get you know into tough situations with those hands where if you're bluffing, they have to let their hand go. The point is, I don't mind a small bet or a large bet as long as you're mainly betting. Over to Sue, this is an interesting spot now with this 10-9, but I think you really need to just be calling. If Sue decides to raise to four to five million, something small, uh, his opponent, when he goes all in, he's going to have to, I don't know, it's close, probably fold, maybe call. It, it, would be, it, would be, it would depend on the odds specifically, but probably just let it go. And when you have a draw this strong, you don't really want to be doing that. If he wanted to raise the flop as a bluff, some hands that would be maybe some better candidates would be a hand like 10-8 of clubs or king-9 of clubs or something with a little less equity that he wouldn't have to be um, you know, worried about raising and having to fold. You have king-9 here, you just have a gut shot and you raise and your opponent jams. Not a huge deal, not the end of the world. You know, you only have a gut shot straight draw. Uh, that's not something that you're, you're you're really upset with folding. And it could be a nice hand to make a move with so that when you do have queen jack or pocket fours, you can bounce it. But 10-9 suited, that's not the case. 10-9 suited, we need to call and play some turns. Sue does decide to make the call, and let's take a turn. In progress to become one of the monster stacks in the room. Here it comes. Bet, 3.5. Mm, smallish. What is smallish? And actually, inviting for Sue is after midnight, so I could discuss implied odds. Do it. But no, I don't want to. It, it <laughs> some might re-aggravate the hamstring that ended my synchronized swimming career. Timothy Sue for the stack to do whatever he wants. Open-ended. It's the only thing he has going for him right now. Yeah, I would minimize the damage, even though he's been given an opportunity here with the smallest bet. I'd minimize the damage of this hand. The turn is a jack, which is a very good card here for the imposition player. Uh, whenever Sue has a jack, he's going to take the sign of the flop. He's not going to raise ace-jack, king-jack suited, jack-10 suited, jack any, any jack. He's not going to raise any of those hands. They're all uh, too strong to fold and too weak to raise. So every jack will go in the call range. Now, given that Sam did bet a very small size in the flop, it is possible he could have a few jacks here himself, although I would imagine a chunk of those are going to be checking the flop. Uh, it depends on the frequency at which Sam wants to be betting this flop and, and the, the overall strategy that he's taking. But the point is the in-position player will have far more jacks in his range than the out-of-position player. This is where stack size is going to play a major role. If they were very deep, Sam can't stack off with aces here because his opponent can simply have a jack. As they get very shallow, he's going to have to stack off with aces because even though a jack is definitely possible, it's just not likely enough. Here, I think we lean a little bit more towards the latter. We're a little bit too short to consider letting our hand go against what could be a jack, uh, and so we're probably going to have to get stacked. So the question is, what's the best way to do it? Should we check and trap our opponent, or should we bet and try and get value? I think in this situation, I lean a little bit more towards checking. Uh, my logic is that when I have aces, I'm less afraid of different runouts. Um, if he has a hand like king-10, he can only win on a nine. Uh, if he has a hand like a queen, I'm going to be able to bet the river or maybe even jam the river if I so choose to anyway. Uh, and then by checking, I allow hands like 10-9 to, to, to take a stab at, to, go, to try and bluff this pot and, and get me off my hand. So I lean a little bit more towards a check, but I don't hate a bet, which Sam does decide to do. Back over to Sue. Deep in the main event, scary turn card you could possibly have. An opponent that you can put to the test. Well, I think we've got the recipe for what could be a great move. In this situation, he can absolutely have a jack. When he does have a jack, it, it would be a reasonable play to jam. Now, if I had a jack, I would also like a call. I think calling makes sense too, so your opponent could bluff the river. Uh, but jamming a jack sum is great as well. You'll stack an overpair. Maybe you could stack a queen. Maybe you can get him off of some equity that otherwise might try and get there on the river if he was just planning on giving up. 
Let's just say, for example, Sam had a flush draw and he bet twice. I knew he was just going to give up the river unless he got there. Well, against that strategy with that hand, you would love to jam a jack and just not let him hit his flush. So in this situation, he can certainly have some hands that do want to jam. Now, the question is, does 10-9 suited make the most sense? And I think it's kind of reasonable. I think King-10 is another hand that could come to mind. Maybe some middling flush draws that couldn't quite... Uh, raise the flop that now are in sort of a similar spot. A hand like if you did decide to call with like a 10 8 of diamonds or 9 8 of diamonds, something like that could be, could make some sense too. Uh, but the point is, in this situation, you got to find some bluffs. And this is a spot where you can really put a ton of pressure on your opponent. So I think it's a nice spot to pull the trigger. It's no damage to Sue, though. He's got quite the stack here. Yeah, I want to keep that big stack. All in? Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, he says all in. Now to Greenwood with the aces. Wow. Oh my God, so much to think about. What do you do? We haven't seen Sue get out of line at all. He's barely played any hand. Sam has almost no information on him except that he seems to be a pretty snug player. But snug players don't really get 29 million chips in the main. And this decision for all of Sam Greenwood's chips. He just built himself a monster arsenal. He sees this opportunity in front of him. Pull the trigger in theory because Sam's got the aces. Not only does he have the aces, he has the especially delicious kind of aces, which are he does not block the flush draw, which his opponent might make a move with. If he had the nut flush draw, it's possible. And also he blocks ace jack suited. In fact, look at this board. Ace jack suited isn't even possible. This is a funny concept. You know, not all aces are exactly the same. We have to think about what could our opponent bluff with? Well, hands like flush draws or straight draws, this, these aces don't block the flush draw and they don't have a king or a 10 in them. What hands could he value bet? Well, hands like ace jack suited, that would always raise pre and always call the three bet. He can't have that either. So these aces specifically are a mandatory no-brainer call where if you had, let's just say, for example, ace of diamonds, uh, ace of spades, well, maybe in that spot you could consider a fold. Still probably wouldn't fold, but you could at least consider it. And this is the type of logic that's important when you play poker. The subtleties, the little details in terms of what you block or don't block that could make the difference. And maybe in this spot specifically, it doesn't really matter that much. Maybe you're calling anyway. Maybe you know the guy's making a move. But if you want a long-term successful poker career, the money will be made in the margins. He does make the call with aces. Let's see what's Sue caught. turns over his draw. Sorry, I just wanted to see if somebody was busting yeah. at the other. <laughs> that was good. So, Popo. Let's start a tragedy, no. so Sam Greenwood <laughs> way ahead, four to one. But Sue with eight outs to Hot. knock out Sam Greenwood. It's absolutely massive. This got swollen to 31 million chips, which would make Greenwood the chip leader if he can just hold, which he's going to do 82% of the time. Timothy Sue has to catch a clean river card. And Sam Greenwood is your main event chip leader here on late time. on basics. <laughs> Greenwood sits down. I'll take it. Sue watches this river card come down. Oh, oh the time. king comes home for Timothy Sue, sending Sam Greenwood to the rail. In theory, the money will be made in theory on the margins. In reality, Shit happens. Thanks for joining us today for Poker Hands. This is your last heads up that if you want $200 off Nick Petrangelo's new high stakes MTT course, well, you can do so until tomorrow. If you're interested in checking it out and learning more about the course, I'll put a link in the description below. All right, thanks for joining guys, and I'll see you again soon.